Rami, welcome in the Game King studio. Uh, next week uh, in Seattle, there's going to be the Steam Dev Days. Yep. Um, you're going to be there. What do you expect? I expect uh, I expect some interesting new developments. I, I think that Steam Steam has never really done any big events before for developers, and usually when they do, it's because they have big news to announce and they want to make sure that the developers know what they're up against, what is going to change, and. One of my biggest um, expectations is, not, I mean, obviously, they're going to be talking about the Steam boxes. Like, that's, that's one thing. And the other thing that I think is going to happen, I'm not sure, is that they are killing Greenlight. They're getting rid of Greenlight. And I sort of, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that because they've been clearing the queue at such a rapid rate. They've been clearing 100 games every month. Every month, 100 games get greenlit. And you don't do that because there's 100 good games on greenlight every month. You do that because you want to get rid of everything that is in greenlight before you kill it. So you don't get you know, upset developers. So I think that's what they're doing. And my belief is that they will open up Steam to anybody. So if you make a game, you can put it on Steam. And that's, that's completely different from how it is now. But that does introduce a new problem, and that's the problem of discoverability, right? How do you discover interesting games? The storefront can't handle hundreds of games. Um, so I think the other change that they are going to um, introduce is peer-to-peer -peer recommendations, is the idea that people can recommend games to other people. And traditionally, they've always had that thing that tells you what your friends are playing. And recently they introduced a review tool where you can review games and recommend them to friends. And I think the next thing they're going to do is allow people to have their own store and allow them to say, like, these are the games that I'm playing and these are the games that I'm featuring. And if they go as far as I hope they will, they will also allow people to earn a little percentage of games sold through their store. And that would make things really interesting. And how would that change things for uh, indie developers? Well, one of the one of the big things now is that there's only this much this much space, right, to to promote a game. The the press can only write about this many games. The news can only write about this many games. The store the storefront, the Steam storefront, can only feature so many games. So how do you get attention for those other games? Well, I think the solution for that doesn't come from video games. It's actually YouTube. It is Let's Play. It is people that are streaming video games and they are essentially in bulk with hundreds of thousands of them promoting video games. The only thing is it's not really something that you can do as a business model unless you're one of the biggest ones. Now, for an indie game, it's hard to get attention, right? Because you're a tiny game, you probably have some unique mechanics or some unique narrative or aesthetic, but you have to communicate that and that's hard. Um, and there's a whole bunch of us. There's a whole bunch of big indie games happening nowadays. So the best way to get attention is to find somebody that likes your game. And if they can recommend that game in an effective way, in a way that also earns them some money, suddenly it's really interesting to have that one game that nobody else is talking about, to have that game that goes viral. Um, so for indie games, it means that a more diverse um, offering of games can be, can be created and also sold through Steam. So I think it's a good thing if that happens. And do you think that would mean the same thing for Steam on PC as Steam on the Steam machines? I think there's not going to be as big of a difference. I, I think that Steam Box and Steam on PC aren't that different. I mean, obviously, yes, the Steam Box is, is different. It's a, it's a Linux box that is mostly created to be easy to use, but uh, like they're obviously going to have access to YouTube and Twitch, right? That's a no-brainer. So if they just create that interface to work with Big Picture, they're essentially done. So I don't think that it's going to have as big as a, of a... I don't think it's going to be that distinguishable between the Steam Box and Steam PC. I do think, however, that um, this is going to be their big pilot. Um, if 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 they go this way, that they're going to try this on PC and if it works, implement it on Steambox. Do you think it's important for Steam to move into the living room with Steam machines, for instance, uh, like PlayStation and Xbox are doing? 
I think the living room is the big, the big battle of this generation. I think that the previous, the previous uh, battle was about mobile, was about handheld, was about what games can you bring with you. I think that battle is over because you either have an iOS device or an Android device or you have handhelds and you use them for different, for different periods of, of your life. I think I don't see that many people playing, playing 3DS in the train, but when people are on holiday, I see a lot more 3DSs. So I think they are for different, for different moments. Um, and I think they've realized that and that battle is over. So the new battle is the living room, is where people sit and sit down and watch TV but also where they can game. And I think that Steam realized that Xbox and PlayStation and, and also Wii U are, well, not Wii U, Wii, um, that they are taking a large uh, part of the, mind, of the mind space of people about gaming. I think that they realized that a lot of people do want to just sit down, not behind their computer in the corner, but on the couch with friends. And I think that uh, the rise of local multiplayer this year with Samurai Gun and with Towerfall and, and traditional, uh, more traditional games like Super Smash Brothers, that they've seen that people want that sort of stuff as well. They want games that you can play with friends as well. And you can't do that on a PC as easily as you can on a couch. So, But I mean, you, got, you have a, a, a small indie studio. Um, you guys are well known. Um, there's going to be platforms like uh, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, the Wii U, iOS devices, Android devices, uh, then there's going to be Steam um, and maybe the Ouya or whatever is coming next. I mean, you guys are going to have to make choices on what platforms yeah. to support. How do you make those choices? I guess for us the choice is simple. The, the, the platforms that are the most um, accommodating are the ones that we prefer and we don't really care about platforms being accommodating to us all that much. We want them to be accommodating to as many people as possible. I think we really try to make our choices from a position of we've got, people know us, people know Vlaambeer in the games industry. Every, every platform that we know with has contacted us, not the other way around. Um, so we don't, we, we don't have a hard time getting deals. Like we can, we can get a good deal, but the question is, will they treat other developers the way they treat us? And the more we see that platforms are trying to do that, the more willing we are to work with them. Um, sometimes that works out, like with Sony. Uh, we were the very first indie game to be published on uh, PlayStation Mobile. That would then grow out to be PlayStation Vita Native and then the PlayStation 4 indie program. We were the very first game in that and we promoted that heavily and it worked out. And sometimes it doesn't work out, like with the Ouya, which we we were a pretty big fan of the Ouya and then, you know, they sort of made some bad decisions business-wise and then we didn't really like them anymore. It's, it's, it's one of those things that like you, you have to choose what you stand behind and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but it is, it is a new age. It is an age in which publishers and platforms are no longer something we need. They're no longer a necessity. What they are is they are a convenience. They are something that helps people bring games to people. And in essence, we want the same thing. We want as many good games to reach as many people that want to play them. And I think that we've only just realized that we do want the same thing. And I think that the strategies that um, Sony and Microsoft have at the moment show that they understand that there is no reason to say, well, indie games, you know, whatever. The more games you have, the more variety of games you can offer on your platform, the better. There is never a reason to say, well, you know, we'll only have these games because, you know, people like fewer games. They don't. People like having as much choice as possible. And I think that's what they're going for. And how do you rate uh, the Steam box to, comp if you compare that to Xbox One or PlayStation 4? How do you compare those? I mean, can they compete or? I, I think, I don't think they're in the same segment. I don't think they're competing. I think that Steam, the Steam box is really created to be, it's not created to compete with Xbox One and PlayStation 4. It's created to be a supplement to those people that already game on PC. It's not there to stop people that buy Xboxes and PlayStation from buying Xboxes and PlayStation. It's there to stop people that have a PC from buying Xboxes and PlayStation. So in a way they are competing, but 
I think more than that, Steam are just creating their own market. And I think that's, that's pretty impressive and slightly terrifying. Cool. If you had to pick one platform for, for a future game. Well, Steam makes the most money by far. Um, they have the biggest user base. And so far, they've not been difficult to work with. They have the most open standard. So if I had to pick one, it, it would be Steam.